everyone. Welcome to our next Kuskwana Viking Facebook Live. My name is Meredith, one of the educators, and um, I'm so excited for you to join me today. This is our last live of September, which is National Sewing Month. So we are going to be talking about all things embroidery. Um, while you come in and get settled, um, just a couple of reminders. We're not going to be posting any links or anything like that or asking for any of your information. So please don't click on anything like that. Um, if there's spam, stuff like that, Ryan and Amy in the background will take care of that. Um, a huge shout out to Ryan and Amy. Also, if you have any questions or anything like that, send it in the chat and they will send it over to me. They're the team in the back that's helping um, make all of this work. So thank you for joining me today. Um, in the comments, I would love for you to shout out your local um, retailer, your local Who's Born Viking retailer. Give them a little shout out um, and let us know where you're from. So we're going to get going. We're going to start um, with stabilizer. Where it all starts is stabilizer. There's different types of stabilizer. There is a tear away. There's wash away. There's cut away. There's sticky. There's so many different types of stabilizer. So, and it all depends on what kind of fabric you're sewing on or what kind of design as well, if it's a high density design or, or not, that you're, what kind of stabilizer you're going to be using. What I'm going to be showing you today is um, t-shirts. So with t-shirts, it's stretchy. And so when you're done with your design, you don't want that tear away coming off because what will happen is you will stretch those stitches when your shirt stretches and then it just, it separates them and it doesn't look good. So you want a permanent stabilizer when you are doing knits. When you're doing cottons, um, you're going to want a, you, you can use a permanent stabilizer definitely, but you can use a tear away. Just depends on the design, the hot, how, how many stitches are in the design, things like that is what I base it off of. So those are a couple things to keep in mind. If you have questions on that, let us know. Um, there's also um, wash away. So you, there's wash away toppers and there's wash away um, bottoms as well. So if you're doing something, again, wash away is not a permanent stabilizer. So you could definitely put it on a cotton. Um, you could put it on anything that you're going to throw in the wash, so like a towel as well. Um, I often do washaways with towels and then I gift them. And then when the people wash them with their own laundry detergent, things like that, it disappears. Um, also with t-shirts and with towels, there is toppers that you can use. There's an iron on or not an iron on. It's an iron away, melt away, clear and melt. And then there's also um, a wash away clear plastic as well that you can put on top. And the reason you use those on towels or t-shirts is to keep your stitches from sinking into them. It gives it a base layer for that stitching to stitch on top of. So if you have a high pile um, towel, that would be a great time to use it. Also with t-shirts, things like that. If you're doing a fine um, font stitch or anything like that, that's a thin stitch, I would definitely use a topper so that it doesn't sink into those um, the ridges on your shirt and things like that. Um, so hopefully that answers a couple of your questions. If you have any thoughts on specific stabilizer for a project you're working on or where you might've had difficulty in the past, just type it in the comments and um, we'll see if we can answer those for you as well. But we're gonna switch over now to hooping and hooping the stabilizer and the um, appropriate ways to do that and things like this. A lot of this may be a refresher, but hopefully my hope is that you can take away some new tips and tricks it's always good just to have a refresher too for um, hooping etiquette and things like that. So we're going to switch over here to our hoops. When you have your hoop, you have a, you have two pieces to your hoop. You have, I'm going to move these guys so I can put this up a little bit higher. You have two pieces to your hoop. You have the inner piece right here and then the outer piece. And this is the piece that clamps everything together and then also connects to your embroidery arm. So when you do this, there is a right or wrong way for doing this. Um, if you look down here at the bottom, I hope y'all can see this. There are these little arrows that point to each other. You want those arrows pointing to each other up and down. So you wouldn't put your hoop this way because those arrows aren't, they're not, they're not both showing those arrows there. So you want to make sure it goes this way. And you also don't want it to go this way. It won't even fit in the hoop this way like that. Even though it is a 120, it's an even square hoop. It won't fit that way. There's real, there's only one way to fit in your hoop. Another little trick that I have, because those little arrows can be hard to see. You can either color them in with a Sharpie or when I would take my machine to class, um, I would label all of the accessories that I brought with me. And so I put my initials on the inner hoop and the outer hoop. 
And I do that right beside each other so that it's a clear visual of, hey, my two initials are right side by side. I know I've got my hoop the right way. I know that if I go this way, I can't see that other initial. It's not right. And same for that way. The initials are not on the same side. So just another little um, tip trick that I have there. Also on the hoop, you will notice you've got these notches. There's a notch here at the bottom. There's one here at the top. There's one over here and one over here. These notches, when you intersect them, that's the center of your hoop. So I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. You also have the clamp and the screw. So whenever you are hooping um, stabilizer or anything like that, you are going to want to loosen your screw, not all the way, and then you're going to want your clamp opened. So I'm going to take a piece of tearaway here, and I'm just going to hoop the tearaway first, and then I'm going to show you um, a couple other things. So you've got your outer hoop down first, and then you're going to put your tearaway on top of it, and then you're going to put the inner hoop right inside of it like that. You want to do this on a flat surface. You don't want to do this on your lap or on the edge of something. Uh, let me see. Yes, liquid starch definitely can help um, keeping your fabric in place and things like that when you and keeping it from shifting when you're doing embroidery. So that's a great suggestion. Thank you. So another. Um, so here we go. We've got our inner hoop in the outer, and this is smooth and flat here. And you notice that my stabilizer goes through each side. You don't want to hoop like this where it's not connected on the side here. That's not a stable hooping. So you want to make sure when you're hooping that the edges of the stabilizer go on the outside of every single side just like this. Then what you're going to do is you're going to push that clamp back into place. If you meet a lot of resistance, loosen your little screw over here and then push it in. Once you've pushed it in, you can tighten this up. We're just going to do it hand tight, just like that. Don't want to over crank it or anything like that. You can, these guys will pop off and they easily slide back into place if it's not broken. These can, you can get replacements of all of these little hoop ends right here at your local store. So keep that in mind if you happen to, to break one of these or misplace a part of it or whatever. Once you've got your clamp down, I've got a taut um, stabilizer here with no, no bumps or waves or anything. What I'm going to do next, I learned this from um, one of our tech guys, um, our service techs, is that you're going to push that inner hoop in just a little bit. And there's a couple reasons for doing this. One, you get this little ledge. You see this little ledge right here. And this is what is on, is what's moving on your embroidery arm um, when it's moving instead of moving on the hoop here. It's got a smooth surface with your stabilizer to move against. And also, if you if it still is a little loose around the edge, this just sets in your stabilizer to get it extra tight. So any questions on that? Any questions? Okay. So we're going to move on to hooping um, fabric. And then I'm going to show you how to find the center and things like that. So we're going to undo this that we have right here. And I've got another piece of stabilizer I'm going to use. Um, because this one's just a little wrinkly and it's easier to start fresh with a new one when you rehoop. So I've got another piece of stabilizer and then I've got a piece of fabric here. And I'm gonna lay them over top, again, making sure that my stabilizer goes around the entire hoop. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I turn it to the side and there's a reason for this. So I have the connecting to your arm side over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to push in these two sides over here, so the top, this is the top of the hoop. I'm gonna push this in and I'm gonna smooth out my fabric and push in that next bottom part. And that gets everything smooth. Um, if it didn't get it smooth, you just take it back out, smooth your hand across your, your fabric and your stabilizer, pushing in that next side over here. Then we're gonna clamp it down. And I know this is not gonna clamp because I had it um, just for stabilizer a minute ago and not fabric. So I'm gonna loosen it and then I'm gonna clamp it down. I'm still a little tight there just like that, and then we're gonna tighten it. Just hand tighten it. And then I'm gonna push in my inner hoop just a little bit to give you that little ledge all the way around like that. So if you have fabric that's big enough to fit in your hoop, it's suggested to hoop the entire piece of fabric. It keeps it all um, smooth and tight for you. You'll have um, not less puckering and things like that. You won't have puckering issues for that. 
So to find the center of your hoop. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a ruler and I got this ruler from my local craft store. I, I love that it's large enough to fit across all of our hoops. Um, so no matter which hoop I'm using, I can make it work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my ruler with those notches at the top and the bottom. And I'm going to take either a friction pin or I have um, these little chalk rulers as well. Um, lots of different options. And we're going to draw our center right there. Like that. And then we're going to do the same thing over here on the other two sides. So just like that. And there's the center of our hoop. But if you look at that, that does not look like the center of the hoop though, does it? It looks like it's a little bit further below the actual center of the hoop. So I would love for you, if you know why the center point is actually lower in the hoop. If you can tell us in the comments, I would love to, to hear your thoughts on that. There is a reason for it not being center. Some people that this is their first time embroidering, they're like, well, that's not the center of the hoop. And there's a, there's a good reason for it. So tell us in the comments if you know what that reason is. Um, I'm going to hoop one more piece of stabilizer here and then show you how to pin if your fabric is not big enough to fill your entire hoop. So hopefully I've given you a second to type in your thoughts on why the center is not in the center of the hoop. And the reasoning is, let's see, it allows for the foot. That's right. So you have your Q foot, your center Q foot, or your R foot, and that allows for the foot in the back. So if you take away, bring this one back over here. If you take away where that foot would finish, this that's now the center. If you look at that now, that's a good squared center right there. So that's just a little reason behind that. So I have my stabilizer on here. Again, I'm going to find my center here. Just gonna do it right on the paper. Just like that. So there's my center. And then I have a piece of fabric here that I've already found the center for. That's my little center mark in there. I'm gonna take a straight pin and we're gonna put it right in the middle of that um, cross that we found there. And then we're going to put it right in the middle of our hoop, just like that. And you're gonna hold it from the back and you can turn this and adjust this and get this how you want this. I'm holding it in the back here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pin this in place right there in the center. And we're not going to leave that there, obviously, because our design is going to go, but we want to pin down the other four sides. So what you're going to do is you're going to push in with your pin, and then you're going to push it back forward. But you want to be careful. I'm using tearaway on this one. You want to be careful not to tear your tearaway. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. And I always do, if I start at the bottom, I'm going to do the top next. And what's great about having these ironed lines, or if you drew your lines on your fabric like I did on this one, you can line up that line with that notch to make sure it's still center and not shifted any. So we're gonna take our next pin because I did the bottom and we're gonna do the top now. Just like that. And then we're gonna do the sides and this is where I'm gonna show you so y'all can see from the sides. So again, we're making sure that our center line is lined up with the notch over here and it is. We're gonna push that in and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my pointer finger to hold the straight pin um, up against the stabilizer. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my thumb in front of where that pin is, and I'm going to push down a little bit as I'm pushing up with this. So I'm pushing it back through the stabilizer and the fabric on the back side, and then I'm pushing this down so that it'll come back up and using my finger here to push it in. So let me show you that one more time. So we're going to put this in here. I'm going to have my pointer finger to push my pin back in and my thumb in front of it. And then I've got a finger on the back side, pushing it back up. Again, I'm not pushing hard because I don't want to tear that, that tear away stabilizer, but that's going to hold it in place until we take it over to our machine. And then you're going to do your fixed stitch. That fixed stitch is a basting stitch that will go either around your design or around your hoop, your choice. And as it goes, if it gets close to your pins, make sure you take your pins out. Um, but yeah, this will temporarily hold it in place until you can get that basting stitch down. So any questions on this so far? 
Yes, <laughs> try not to stick yourself. I have stuck myself plenty of times um, before and it will happen. Whenever you're pushing it back in, just don't be pushing hard. Um, and then it'll just, it'll just be a little perk, not a, not a big one. So, all right. So next thing, any questions on that so far before I switch to t-shirts and things like that, or finding the center of t-shirts and things like that? Cause I feel like that's when people get into embroidery, they're doing monograms, um, onesies, things like that. Um, Typically, that's what I see most people when they start embroidery. That's what they get into. So I wanted to go through T-shirts and onesies and getting them centered as well. So we're going to move back over here. I'm going to take this out because I'm going to use this hoop that I have hooped already here. Get all these up. Okay, let's start with a onesie first. So I have a onesie here. And another little trick that I've learned that helps me is within the software, let me come back over here and show you. Within the software, you can print your designs at life size or 100%. So what I do is I, I'm doing a monogram, really any design on a garment that I'm doing, I will print out the actual design on the grid. So if you notice, there's like the grid lines and that's what you see on your screen in the software. So you'll go to print and um, actually, where is it? You go to print and then on the next screen that pops up it'll give you the option of like making sure that it's life size you want to make sure you choose life size and you can just print out the one page you don't need all of the pages um i pulled it up really quick just to make sure i'm doing it yeah i'm not missing a step in there um you don't need to print out all the pages you can if you want to i normally just print out the first page or if it's a big enough design that you have to take them together just print out the the pages that you need so once you have that, I cut around the design on the closest grid to the design. So if you notice, I'm right on the grid line right up here and same on the sides and whatnot so that it's even. Then what you're going to do is you're going to fold it in half like this, lining up your lines at the edge there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take a pair of scissors and you're just going to do a little snip right there at that center intersection. Then what you're going to do is you're going to fold it the other way in half. Same thing. Do the little snip at the intersection there. So you have just a little opening right there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this to our garment. So let me. So here's our garment. I or my onesie, I should say. I normally go an inch to two inches below the collar, just depending on how big the design is. Um, and then you're going to find the center of it right there. So again, just measuring left to right, making sure you're centered. And then what you're going to do is you're either going to take your, um, your chalk pen here or your friction pen, and you're going to draw just little notch, little notch marks. So at that center line at the top, bottom, left and right. So I'm going to go right there, right there, right there, and over here. And then I'm also going to do it in the center. So I just do a little bit right there. So there's my center mark. Let me pull this up a little bit higher so you all can see. So here's my center mark and then I've got my top, bottom, left and right. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on my hoop. I'm gonna pin this in place. So you're gonna turn it right, or I'm sorry, wrong side out and work in through the bottom right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that center marking that I did and I'm going to put a pin the same way that I did with that fabric I showed you a minute ago. We are going to put a pin right there in the middle and then not poke ourselves and put it through right here. So I have tear away on here now. This is not re repeat. This is not what you would use on a onesie normally. You're going to want to use a cutaway, but because just for time's sake, I've already got it hooped. That's what we're going to go with today. So find that center point, hold the pin on the underside and sort of straighten out your onesie, get it roughly where your lines are gonna line up here in a minute. And then we're just gonna pin that back in place just to hold that center one. We're gonna take that out here in a minute. Then what I'm gonna do is here's my bottom marking right here. I don't know if y'all can see that on me, right there. I'm gonna feel for that little notch that I told you about at the bottom or you can lift it up to see where your line is 
right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this in place. We want to make sure that we're not pulling the shirt or adding any tension on it. Um, because once you're done with your design and you unpin it, it will sort of shrink back up a little bit because you had that tension on it for the design. So I did the bottom first. I'm going to move to the top next. So again, I've got my little mark right here. Make it a little bit darker so you can see. I'm going to line it up with the line. Thankfully, I'm using the white onesie so I can see my drawn line underneath. And we're going to pin this one in place, making sure that we're smooth all the way through right here. And then we're going to do the sides. So same thing. Here's our line right here. And I'm feeling for my notch on my hoop. Make sure we're all smooth and pin this in place. Just like that. And then we're going to do the other side. So feel for that notch. There's my blue line right here. It's probably hard to see on. Should have done my pen. There we go. Again, making sure we're smooth and pinning this in place. If you need to make any adjustments, this is definitely the time to do it. And we're gonna take out that center pin. And right there is your is the front of where it's gonna be. Um, so again, having that life-size printout is super helpful, not just for onesies, but for any shirt. Um, another option that you have with onesies that I will sometimes do with um, smaller size onesies or even the, the long gowns is I will if you have a serger, and even if you don't have a serger, you can do this. I will take out this side seam just a little bit, not a lot, so that it opens up that side. And then I've got um, a more flat workspace to work within. If you're new to onesies, I would strongly suggest doing that first if you have the option of a serger. If you don't, you do have the option on our machines to do a seam and overcast stitch, which is basically a serge stitch. So you can sew it back up as soon as you're done. Nobody knows any different, and it's on the inside. Nobody's going to notice. So any questions on onesies? This this is the, the hard one, I would say. Um, but I do um, lots of these, and these are some of the success things that I found um, that work for me with finding the center, getting the design centered, and it not being wonky. Another tip is once you've hooped all of this, we're going to do that fixed stitch around our design. And the reason for multiple reasons. One, to stabilize the onesie to the stabilizer, but then also I can look to see where that fixed stitch is. If that fixed stitch is too far to the left or the right or above or below those notches, I know my design is not where I want it. I don't have my fabric where I want it um, because I put this where I want it. And again, this is why you cut so on the, on the grid closest to the edge of the design so that you know this is the space. So that fixed stitch is what's gonna go on the perimeter basically of where this paper is. So um, if you don't have it right, you can easily take that fixed stitch out, adjust your shirt in any way or design position it, which I'm gonna show you here in a little bit how to do the two-step design position. Um, you could definitely do that just to find the center of your center point that you marked. Um, I do that often also just as a, a double check to make sure I've got everything where I want it. Do you ever use adhesive tape? um for where specifically in what in what way um or i'm sorry adhesive spray i'm sorry not tape spray sorry um trying to think i don't often um i use it more when i'm putting things together like layering quilts and stuff like that i don't use it with shirts and things like that because it is just, it's a, it's a light residue that's still there. Um, we have sticky stabilizer if you wanted to do that, but for, you could do the sticky stabilizer with towels because towels don't stretch, but I would not do the sticky stabilizer for t-shirts or onesies or anything, anything with knit because sticky stabilizer is tear away. And so it's not this correct stabilizer that you want. So Yes, so sticky back stabilizer. I use that more with the metal hoops and with um, towels is when I use sticky back stabilizer. Um, I have some of that today, and if we have time, I can definitely show you how I do that on a metal hoop. Um, I've got a lot I want to show you today, so hopefully if we've got time, I can do that for you real quick. Anything else before I go to um, a t-shirt really quick? I'll just show you quickly how to do a t-shirt because it's definitely a lot easier to do a t-shirt because you've got more space to, to work with in. Okay. So we're going to take this guy out here. Actually, we'll just leave 
think we're going to take them out. I don't have another one yet. So same process, but I have a really neat tool that I want to show you that I use for t-shirts. It's my go-to um, whenever I'm doing t-shirts, zip ups, button downs, anything like that. So it's called an embroiderer's helper and I got it off of Amazon. Um, I don't think it's under $20. I know that I'm pretty sure. Um, but I, this is one of my favorite go-tos. So we've got a t-shirt here and what we're going to do, I've got it folded in half. So I want to put a monogram on this t-shirt is what I want to do. So I have it folded in half right here and I'm going to lay it out. So this is my center of my shirt right over here. And what I'm going to do is based off of the pictures, I'm going to figure out. So if you had a button down, you would put this little curve right there on that button and same for um, your, your ribbed on the top of your neckline. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna line this up right here. And this is a size large shirt. So it has these little notches here, small, medium, large, extra large. So right here, a large. And I recently, so this will also work with larger shirts. I recently did um, a three or four X shirt that I needed to do a monogram name on. And I just measured this distance right here and then basically just did that stair step down and so you can get a larger size if you happen to need that. So there's our center point right there. And then what you're going to do, again, take that. Where is my piece of paper? Hold on a second. I'm going to do this. Oh, over here. Again, take your printout that you have. And this is another reason why you cut out that center. You line up your little marking with that center line there making sure we're straight. And this is also a good visual. If you think that this is too big or you want it, you want it smaller, if you want it larger, anything like that, to have that life-size printout gives you a really good visual of what it's going to look like on your shirt. So I, this, I don't print a lot, but the only thing really that I print are these printouts. So we're going to do our little marks at the top and bottom center lines because these are where we're going to line up on our hoop, remember? And then there's our center point. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to open up my shirt, turn it wrong side out. And right here are my markings. So again, same process. I'm going to put that center pin right here in my shirt and then in the middle of my hoop. So another little trick that doesn't work for me to show you today I normally do this on my ironing board because what I can do, your ironing board's fabric. You can push this pin all the way through so that it keeps it stable. My ironing board, the, the fabric and the, the batting and stuff on it, keep it so that it's not moving and I don't have to hold it like this right here. But we're going to do that for today. And again, lining up our notches. I'm feeling for those notches right here. And... Go for that notch, make sure that's lined up and that we're smooth here and pin that in place just like that. And same thing over here. And you're going to repeat that process all the way around just like that. So again, I would do it on both sides as well. Take my center one out and then do my fixed stitch. Once I do my fixed stitch, I want that fixed stitch line to be right on the edge of where my marking is. If it's too far one way or up or down, I know that I do not have my design where I want it. So again, this is just another good fail safe before you start doing something to make sure you have it centered. That basting stitch is so easy to take out and it's worth the extra five minutes that it takes to do that. So any questions on this so far before we move on to our next thing? We doing good? We get a quick drink really quick. All right, next I'm going to show you on the MySonet app. So this is applicable to those of you that have a Wi-Fi enabled machine. You will have your machine connected to your MySonet account. And then you will also log in. I'm opening up my phone to show you. You will also log in. This is the app right here. Uh, this way. Nope, my finger goes this way. It's backwards on my screen, so it's kind of hard. So it's um, this purple cloud, and it says MySonet. You're going to download that app and log in with the same login that you used on your machine. And this is also the same login that you use on the website for the MySonet um, website. 
all of it's connected in, in the same. So you have this design placement feature right here. So we're gonna do that. And then it's gonna pull up, my machine is on, your machine does need to be on for it to recognize it. And it's gonna recognize, I'm using the Designer Ruby 90 today. So I'm going to select that. And then it's gonna open up, come over here and show you. It's gonna open up this screen right here where you're gonna take a picture. So I already have, let me show you something hooped to show you today. I have a shirt with a pocket on it. Um, let me look really quick. Does the embroider helper help with knowing how far down from the neck you want to put something when putting it in the center of a shirt? Um, let me look. Good question. Um, it does not say in that way, but I, it's really hard to tell. So, I came across this recently. I was doing um, a shirt for somebody else and some people are, have bigger chests than me. And so their shirts will, will come out further than mine or um, the sides also will um, go further. It just, it just depends on the person. It's really, really hard to tell. Um, this is just a good baseline. Oh, I know when I was doing that, when I was doing the, the three, four X shirt and I had to go down a little bit, I still had my printout. And I had the whole shirt laid out and I, I looked at it and I was like, does this look where it's going to go? But again, it's, it's sort of hard to tell because some people do have bigger chests or broader shoulders, which will make their, their shirts and their sweatshirts sit differently on their chest. So if you know who the person is, feel free to have them put the garment on and then sort of hold up where the design is going to go and mark it that way. Um, so that you're, you know what I mean? It just, it really just depends on the person. This is just a good reference guide for, um, monograms, but you could definitely use it. If you had a larger and extra large shirt, you could find out where that is and then go over and find the center of your shirt. Uh, because if it's a large shirt and you want the monogram there, you would ideally, I would think want it in that same horizontal range, um, but in the center. So it can, in a way you can make it work in your favor. How do you completely hoop the t-shirts? So I don't completely hoop t-shirts. Um, when I do t-shirts, I, I don't, I don't hoop t-shirts because, um, you, you can, I'm sure you can. I don't for a couple reasons. One, because to get the shirt straight and not crooked, um, within the hoop, because when you push that, that inner part of the hoop down, it can shift the shirt a little bit. And so I ideally hoop my stabilizer, my cutaway stabilizer first, find the center like I showed you, and then pin it to the center. Um, I don't I don't completely hoop t-shirts, except for this one exception that I'm about to show you. And it's really not a t-shirt that I'm showing you. It's um it's like a it's a button-up one. So t-shirts, I, I don't think I've ever fully hooped a t-shirt. So with shirts like this, so this is just a button down shirt with a pocket on the, on the side over here. I want to put like a logo or a name or something right across here. Another way of um, getting the design where you want it is using the My Sona app with the, let me go back and show you, with the design placement feature right here. So we're going to touch that and it's going to find my designer Ruby 90. And then it's going to pull up a camera. So what I'm going to do is I want to make sure, and this does not work, unfortunately, with metal hoops. That's a question that always comes up because you want to be able to see these corner points. Um, so it, it really needs to be done with a, um, a hoop um, with two pieces, not the metal hoops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my phone over top of my hoop as flat as, you know, I just got it flat on my hand here like this holding it like this, and I'm going to hit the take a picture like that. There it is, and you can retake it or you can use this photo. So we're gonna use the photo, and then I'm going to select my hoop, which it's already selected. So based off of the machine, it's gonna tell you all of the hoops that are compatible with that machine. So I'm using the five by seven hoop. That's what I have in here, the 180 by 130. Then you have these four points down here in the corners. So what I'm gonna do, if you look up here, when I touch this, um, the little circle, you notice that this little guy pops up and it's a more zoomed in feature, um, more zoomed in view of those corners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, if you look, I'm going to try and show you, you know, if y'all can see that. 
I'm going to, you've got the little white circle, the little white dot. I want to line that up right on the edge of that. Let me show you, this might be easier. There's the little white dot. I'm lining it up right here at the edge of this, these corner points. And you've got those four corner points all the way around. So let me do that really quick. I'm going to show you all, but I'm going to have to do it at an angle where I can see it. You can make just those fine little adjustments. And do it this hand. My hands are shaky today. Right there. And once you think you have it where you want it, you can see on the screen too. Once you think you have it where you want it, you're going to hit the little arrow to the side here. And there it is. And you can also tell right there, if I had a lot of white space, um, you would be able to tell. So let me show you what that might look like. So if I moved it way out of the way, if you look at that there, this top left corner, that's obviously not where we want that. So we're going to go back and just make that adjustment. And then what we're going to do, again, hit that arrow. And before I hit this little paper airplane, I'm going to show you my other screen over here so y'all can see what it does. I'm going to add this guy one second. So I've got my main screen up here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, oh, it threw my phone, sorry. I'm going to hit my little green paper airplane and watch my machine screen at the same time I do that. I'm trying to do it backwards here. I'm getting it. There it goes. So it says, image successfully sent, and if you look at my screen now, there is the picture of my shirt. So what you could do is if you had a logo or a company name or somebody's name you wanted to put or just, you know, a little flower design or something like that over top of that pocket, um, you can put it right where you want it right there. So you can pull that design in, move it where you want it, hook up your hoop, and, and it'll all be lined up. Again, strongly suggest doing the thick stitch, the basting stitch around just to confirm you have it where you want it and that it's straight. Just keep that in mind, but I love this feature for any of our machines that are Wi-Fi enabled. This is, it's a great feature. And there's a few other things also. Um, there's the monitor, there's the QR code creator and the photo stitch also. So there's a few things on here that you can do. And even if you don't have um, a MySona enabled machine, um, I believe, Amy, can't you take, pick, you can use the QR and the photo stitch and send it to your MySona cloud, which you can open up in the software. So correct me if I'm wrong, Amy, but that's, I believe that's the case. So any questions on using the app? QR code, uh, platinum subscription only. Thank you, Amy, for confirming platinum subscription only. I, I have not been specific with, with which ones yet, but um, if you have any questions on that there, please feel free to put them in the comments. And if Amy and I know it, we'll respond to it. And then also there's a comparison chart on the website and you can see the different subscription levels and what you get with under all of them. So. So the name of the app, I'll show it to you one more time, is it's My Sonet, and it's a purple little cloud. So if you look right there, that purple little cloud is what you're looking for. It's kind of blurry, I apologize. But that's what you're looking for, My Sonet um, enabled app. So any more questions on that before we switch to design positioning? This is one of my favorite things to show. Okay, if you do have questions, feel free to type them in and we can always come back to them too. So to clear this off your screen, let me show you because that's another question we get often. Well, now how do I get this off my screen? People sort of panic because they don't want to turn their, you, you don't have to turn your machine off and back on for it to disappear. So if you click and hold on these little grids down here, this is where you can change your background color. But if you look right here, it says show imported background image. That's on right now. We're going to turn that off and there it goes. Super easy, don't have to turn your machine on and off. So remember that little, little tidbit. So I'm going to switch this camera over here. So I have a couple designs already um, stitched out and we're gonna put its matching design lined up on it. So this is really important if you are, um, when you would use design positioning versus finding the center of your design like I had showed you before, is if you have a bunch of designs already stitched out or you have something where you want to put a design right in the middle of it or or in a certain part of it this is where you would design position where you want it so you cannot get any more precise than what i'm about to show you because you can zoom in and see the stitches 
exactly where they land and put your needle exactly where it's supposed to go. So some of our machines have a one point, which is a two step design position or a two point four step design position. So um, this is beneficial to, I wanna say Topaz 50 and up, Amy, I don't believe Topaz 40 has, this Topaz 40, it's been so long. Um, Topaz 50, yes, um, Topaz 50 and higher has at least the 1.2 step design position. So um, this is a great feature if you're looking to trade up to a new machine. Um, this is definitely one of the top features of why you would want to do that. So let's switch back over here. So we're going to focus over here on our machine screen. And I'm going to find that design that I had. And it was one that was already on the machine. So I'm going to go over, again, I'm using the Designer Ruby 90. I'm going to go over to um, D, Theme Stitches. And I've got this guy right here, number 17. I'm going to just put him somewhere on my screen. Then I'm going to switch to the 260 by 200 hoop because that's what hoop I'm using over here today. Well, I've got one question. How would you sew the onesies? Would you use? Um, so with onesies, I really sit and I baby my onesies. You can't, if you're doing a flat design like this, you can definitely walk away from it like this one. But with onesies, you're going to sit there, you're going to baby it because it's, depending on where it is on the, I don't have it. I took it out of the hoop a minute ago. Depending on where you have it, um, you may have to move your fabric more out of the way on one side, but then it's gonna do the design on the other side. So you gotta move the fabric on the other side. You can definitely try and pin them out of the way, but it stretches both sides of the onesie and you don't wanna have a lot of, it's such a small area. You don't wanna have a lot of stretch, even though you have that fixed stitch on there you can see some of that stretching. So I really sit and I baby them and I'm holding the, the fabric out of the way as the design moves. So I hope that, I hope that helps answer that. Um, and sometimes I slow it down also. When I'm doing a fixed stitch on a onesie, I have the speed slowed all the way down because as it's going around to do that fixed stitch, I wanna make sure that my fabric is smooth, but it's not pulled and that it's straight. So I will, um, use my hands and guide along as it goes. And if I get to a part, and this is a good point also, if you didn't know, you can use your presser foot to, to embroider, to sew out that fixed stitch. So instead of hitting start stop when you're doing the fixed stitch, if you have your presser foot connected, you can use that. And when you let up, it's going to stop. So you can make those adjustments, smooth out the shirt, the onesie, whatever it is, and make those adjustments. So either slow your machine all the way down or use your presser foot when you're doing a fixed stitch. Um, around a onesie. I hope that that answers those questions. Okay, so back over here, design positioning. So I've got my design that I'm going to match up with this one right here that I have. I want these two little corners to match up with the other two little corners over here. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to hit go right down here in the bottom. And everything that's on here is what I've got. So you, you want to have the sensor cue, but if you have the option between a free motion spring and a free motion floating, definitely choose a free motion spring. So the cue foot. And we are going to connect our hoop on. Hit okay. And then what I'm going to do is down here at the bottom, can you guys see? You can tell on the screen, Amy. Um, let's see this little glare, I'm sorry. But down here on the bottom, there is a little flower with a bullseye in the middle of it. We're going to touch that little guy. And it may look different on, on other machines. So for the Designer Ruby 90, you have a 2.4 step design positioning. So we're going to choose this first little circle right here that's one. And if you notice, one and three have a flower on them. So what um, somebody taught me a long time ago when I was learning this is if you see that flower, that means you need to focus on the design that's on your screen. So flower means embroidery design, which you can see on your screen. And then the two and four have hoops. So when you're on two and four, we're focused on the hoop. Um, so I know that gets confusing to people sometimes, but if you think about it that way, that's been my best way of remembering it when I was learning. So we're going to find our first point, which is number one right here. We're gonna look on our machine or on the screen. And you can zoom into this point. So if you hit this little magnifying lens right here, 
I can zoom into the point, the design, or the hoop. So here's what it looks like if I zoom into the design. Here's what it looks like if I zoom out to hoop. And here's what it looks like when I zoom in to my point. Look at that. Those are the stitches right there. So we are going to line up our little point. And you notice I'm not touching right over that. Because if I put my finger over that point, I can't see where I'm placing it. But if you put your finger off to the side over here, you can make those adjustments right there. Once you get it roughly where you want it, you can definitely use the arrows as well to make any fine tune adjustments that you, that you might need. So that's our first point right there. And then we're gonna come down here and choose our next step. So now that I'm on this number two, that's the hoop. So we're gonna be focused over here. I want to line up that point with one of these points right up over here. So we're gonna move our arrows. And if you hold on the arrow, it'll move a little bit faster versus just doing like one every stitch or so. We're going to line this up right over here. Once I get, let me back out here so you can see this. Once I get a little bit closer, I'm going to lower my needle down and I'm actually cut it right where I want it. Right there. I'm going to zoom in so y'all can see this. I've got my needle lowered and I want it right there on the edge of where that other flower meets. So that's my first point. Then we're going to come back over here to my screen and we're going to choose step number three. And it's the flower. So we're going back over here. Let me back back up. We're going back over here to our screen and we're going to focus over here. So there's my point right there. I want to move that point to the top of this one right here. Watch all I moved. So I moved these designs. I turned them so that it wouldn't, whenever I pick the next design, I wouldn't, I'd would have to move it and watch me uncoincidentally get it right where it's supposed to be without even having to make adjustments. So I'm going to zoom into my point and get this exactly where I want it. And that looks good right there. Now we're going to go to step number four. And we're going to come back over to our hoop. Well, good. It's not where I want it. So I want this needle to come down here. This first point, let me back up here so you can see. This first point that we found is set. So if you think about it, I've got a pin right here. And now whenever I move my design, it's going to rotate around that fixed point that I have here. So I'm going to use my arrows and you notice I only have my left and right arrow now so I can't move it up and down because I've got my fixed point here. I'm going to move this down until it lines up. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see so that it lines up right here. So I need to go a little bit more. Turn in my hand while I'm going to go a few more stitches. Just like that. There we go. So now I've got that next point right where I want it right there. So let's zoom back out. And then we're going to hit our um, check mark down here at the bottom. Let me back out so you can see. So that's where it is. Let's do the whole thing. That's where we want it. And then we're going to hit start. So while that goes, if you have any questions or anything that I can show you again while this is stitching out, just let me know. Um, this is a pretty quick stitch out, so we're going to let this go really quick, and then I'll show you one more time how to do that on this next one down here at the bottom, just as a, a good refresher. So, any questions so far? Y'all are being kind of quiet today. Or if you have used the design placement feature, um, I would love to hear when it's been successful for you. Um, I know sometimes just hearing how other people use it gives people ideas of when they can use it as well. So feel free to share in the comments. So great question. Somebody asked, how does this work on the um, designer to best 50? So with this one, you notice I have my first point and then my second point. With the designer to best 50, you only have one point. So whenever I'm finding the center of my shirt or my onesie, that center point that I said, sometimes I will design position it to find that center. You get, you have one point to work with. So you would basically just stop at the step that I just showed you. You wouldn't have the option to rotate it. So you really want to get it on the screen 
as close to where you want it as you can. And there we go. So let me come back over here, this one here. And I've got those exactly lined up and I could do another one if I wanted to and just keep going. So super quick, super simple and easy. Um, my problem is trying to find the exact center of a design before starting the stitch out. So are you talking about um, on the on a, on a hoop? Is that what you're talking about? So let me sh let me do one more thing. I'm going to show you since y'all have asked, especially for the Topaz 50, this may be a better option to show you. So I'm going to come back over here really quick and I'm going to quickly, um, where's my, this one? I'm going to quickly, this is not what I plan to do, but I think it will be helpful to find that center point And then also for the Topaz 50. So I'm going to pin this back down here in the center where I've got it. So give me just a second, do this quickly. And y'all can see what I'm talking about when I, it won't work for this one because I don't have this specific design, but on the, this machine, but I can show you what the design we have. So just bear with me real quick. Any other questions I can answer while I get this set up? Let's see. I have an issue with the design placement feature on the app, but never knew how to delete the design off. The oh, good. Yeah, I feel like this this live is hopefully a refresher to most of you, but hopefully out. See, I just look and I just stabbed myself. I wasn't even doing that. Hopefully it's just a good refresher or you picked up another good tip um, for your embroidery process. Okay, so I'm going to take this center guy out here. We are going to switch back over here really quick. I'm going to take this off. So for the Topaz 50, I'm going to go back out of this really quick. I'm going to switch my hoop because I'm using a 120 by 120 hoop right here. And then we're going to hit go. And... So here is my t-shirt. I'm going to get this hooked on here and at the same time, move my shirt out of the way. There we go. Okay. So remember, this is my center point. Let me zoom in here. This is my center point and I want to make my design line up right there in the center. So even if I happen to shift my shirt in my hoop, as long as I put my center point right there, it's where it's gonna wanna be. So if you look over here on the screen, I'm gonna click the flower with the little bullseye in the center again for design positioning. Right down here, this first step, I'm gonna hit that and I'm working on the screen. So I wanna find the center of that um, point right there. So if this little, um, it looks like a little bullseye square also. If you touch that and you hit this center marking, that put my point, Oh, and I moved it, it put my point in the center of my design that's on the screen. So my design is not centered on my hoop, or like on the screen, it's not centered, obviously. Let me show you this way. It's more up to the top and to the right over here, but that's the center of my design. So I've got my first point selected. Now I'm gonna come over to my hoop. So if you look over here, I'm a little bit far off. So I'm gonna use my arrows. I'm looking at my hoop over here, but I'm using my arrows. I'm gonna move my needle where I want it right here, up and over a little bit more. And if you were watching this, the machine screen, you notice that the actual design moved as well. So there we go, right there. So I've got my needle in the center. So now the center of that design is going to be in the center of where I want it right here on my shirt. Does that answer how to find the exact center of the design when stitching it out? So now that I've got that here, I'm gonna hit my check mark. And I'm going to do my fixed stitch. And I'll show you all that you'll see that that point is right there in the center. Let me know if that answered that, that question. So whenever I, like I said, whenever I do a onesie, I still do 
the design placement, but I just do the two, the two steps. So that, um, that first step and the second step, and that's the process that you would use if you had a Topaz 50. You don't have the option for the next two steps. You just have a 1.2 step design position. Yes, perfect. Okay, so if you look back over here, that point is in the center of this hoop. Let me see, that's not gonna work there. Pull over here to show you. Look at that, if I hold it straight. That's how you get it in the center. So again, even if you, when you pin your shirt, which I sometimes do, the shirt will shift like a millimeter or two millimeters up one way or the other. I will still do my two point um, design positioning just to make sure my design is gonna fit right there in the center where I wanted it. Um, never use design positioning for center. I just move my needle to the center of the design template. Have I been doing it wrong? No, not necessarily. Um, no. But whenever you're doing design positioning, you find the center and you can center your design on the hoop on the screen. So if I come back over here, let me go back to the embroidery mode here. So I've got my, make this a little bit bigger. So this is my hoop, this square. I'm gonna move it. If I want this to be in the center, I'm gonna hit that center button right there. That puts my design in the center. But that doesn't mean that my shirt is centered where I want it on the hoop. So if, I mean, if you, if you had it all centered right, it would line up in a perfect world, but sometimes it does shift. And like I said, it's always just like a millimeter or two. It's not a huge difference. Um, but I will make those easy little adjustments. It took me not even a minute, I believe to do that. And it's worth it because then I know when I stitch this out, especially if it's on a onesie, cause you can't turn it right side out to see, um, that it's where I want it to be. Another reason I don't hoop my shirts as well is once I do that fixed stitch, if my shirt is big enough, I will turn it right side out and hold it up and look at it. And then I can see, does my fixed stitch look straight? Does it look wonky? Does it look crooked? I've had that happen sometimes where it's a little bit of an angle and I'm like, oh, I need to make that adjustment. And it's so easy to take that basting stitch out, make those little adjustments and redo that fixed stitch. Um, but if I had hooped my shirt, I wouldn't be able to do that. So my hoop is actually still on my shirt. I just turn my shirt right side out. And then what I do is I turn it right back wrong side out. And there you go. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, what button on the machine do you push to get the column of five buttons to hit the center? So let me show you. Let me go back over here back into embroidery mode. So, and then I'm under the design positioning. So again, oh, it wants my hoop connected. Hold on a second. Let me just put a hoop on it. It doesn't like to do that without it. There we go. So I'm gonna hit my flower with my bullseye down here. And um, right here, this little button right here is gonna give you those five drop down. So there's my center point, just like that. Or if I wanted to find a corner point, you wouldn't, I don't know when you would use these corner points for design positioning, unless you're doing like an endless design or something like that. Um, so again, center point is gonna be right there. Does that answer that question? Um, is there only one version of the Q foot? Someone suggested that there was one for the epics and it said, yes. So there is a grayish color. When you put them side by side, you can see that one's gray and one's white. Um, when you're looking at just the gray one, it, it does look white. There is one for the epics and then one for, so that's the class um, eight and nine machines. And then there's one for um, like the, the topaz, the diamonds, the, um, the sapphire, the brilliance. That one is a white one. And the Q-foot comes with your machine. Um, and the reason there's a difference is this bar, let me show you here, this bar that goes over the needle is a little bit longer on the epics than it is on the others because it is a higher space that it has to fit on. So yes, there is a difference. You wanna make sure you have the right one. I have um, a Topaz, an older Topaz, and then I've got these guys too. And I have to make sure I don't get them mixed up. So I, I keep my things, my feet per machine in that way separate. Um, can you please show where to add the fixed stitch? Yes. So there's a couple places to do that. Let me show you the one here on the screen. So if I back out of this, 
when you go to embroidery mode, I'm going to go back to my design mode over here. So when you go to hit go and go to embroidery mode, right down here at the bottom, here's one way. You can do based around design or based around hoop. And as soon as you select that, it's going to automatically put a fixed stitch at the beginning of your design. So if I look at this now, look, I've got my basting stitch already there. And it's a step that was added in to my stitch out of my design. Or another option, let me back up so you can see this here. You see, I'm gonna have to hold hold your breath just for a second. I'm gonna adjust my camera here a little bit. So there is a button right there. You see that fix? It's engaged right now because if you look at the screen, I've got a fix. But if I hit that button there, it takes that basting stitch away and it's not lit up or engaged. So this is your other option for a fix stitch. Any any other questions on that? get this back here for you so we are right at time and unless hold on, I'm trying to get in this tight here unless y'all have something else you would like to see again um I think we've come to the end here but I'm happy if you want to see something one more time we've got a little bit of time um but if not Amy's going to give me the next lives and um yeah if you think of any questions feel free to type them in so our next Who's Smart Biking Live is Wednesday, October 4th at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. Kathy is doing that live, Kathy Fromm, and she's doing um, sewing home decor projects for the fall. She is doing a reversible table runner. Um, I'm really excited about this. So it could work for Halloween. It could work for Thanksgiving. It could work for Christmas, just depending on the fabric that you're using. So um, we would love for you to join Kathy on Wednesday, October 4th. And then the next My Sonet Live is going to be Wednesday, October 11th at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. And that's with Kathy also. She will be showing, um, expanding on the capabilities of fonts in our software. So if you have, I mean, I feel like a lot of people, I mentioned it, get into embroidery and sewing for shirts and monograms and fonts and stuff. This is a great live for you to join, um, join Kathy and learn about how you can use the font and expanding on that and your knowledge. So. Um, is it okay to cut the thread in between color changes, especially when doing in the hoop where you're taking the hoop? Yes. So I will, people ask this question and it's, it depends on the design, the designer. It just, there's a lot of factors that go into it. So whenever you do, um, whenever I'm doing an applique, I will do the, um, the, you'll have the, the placement stitch. Then you'll put your fabric on and then you'll do your tack down stitch. Well, from there, you want to cut that, that fabric away for the applique, correct? And I think that's probably what, um, like in the hoop things as well, whenever you're cutting close. So if you hit the thread cutter on your machine, it will cut the bobbin thread. In some designs, people are like, well, it didn't cut my bobbin. Not when you, whenever you finish a step, let me backtrack, I'm sorry. Whenever you finish a step or a color, it may cut the top thread, but does not cut the bobbin thread. That has nothing to do with your machine. It has to do with the design and the steps that the designer put into it. So whenever I need to pull the hoop off to do an applique or to do an in the hoop where I'm going to put a zipper down or something, I know that that step is done, but the bobbin thread is still attached. So I will hit those scissors and that's completely okay. And that will cut my bobbin thread so that when I pull it off, I don't have a long tail and then I have to cut it with my scissors. So yes, it is safe um, to cut, to hit the scissors and cut your bobbin thread as you pull the hoop out. Any other questions? That was a great question. All right, there's not anything else. Thank you again um, for joining me today. I really hope that you took away some new um, knowledge on hooping different things, um, that you're excited to go out and try some new things if you have not done t-shirts or use the app or design positioning or anything like that. Feel free to send us pictures, things like that, of, of what you've done when you've utilized these things. We'd love to see that. Um, but if there's not anything else, continue to put questions in there. If you've watched this later, we'll come back and check those questions and answer those if you have them. Um, but if not, I hope you enjoyed this. And thank you so much. And we will see you next time.